All right, I want to just give it up to the Siren Theater, too, for having us. Thanks so much, Shelly. We love you. All right, are you guys ready to see some queer comedy? I'm going to start you off. Um, who thinks I look like a boss bitch tonight? communications the, uh, training today at work and um, some of the feedback I got was like you're a really good leader and you're really sweet and diplomatic but don't feel like you fully own up to your leadership position because you're afraid of being bossy and hurting someone's feelings so here's me owning it you guys sit there and laugh at everybody it's gonna be a good night <laughs> so did everybody have a good pride this summer I mean, let's be honest, Pride is pretty much every day for us, right? Right? Celebrating all the time. This is my fifth Pride as a genderqueer fairy. Um, thank you. But my first Pride, actually, surprisingly, as a bisexual person. Uh, I know what you're thinking, right? Thank you. Cheers for bi people. Um, I found out by accident. Uh, I know y'all are like, Katie, you're 30. How did you not know? Well, I think I just was too afraid to be like, yeah, I could be liked by all. <laughs> um, I found out in a conversation with my mom about ice dancing. Um, she just kept going on about like, oh, ice dancing during the Olympics. It's so romantic. I love the couples because they do like these like hetero couple love stories. And the team she kept talking about was like this brother-sister duo. Because you know like straight people would rather let siblings fake it than give the rest of us a chance. <laughs> and uh, she was just going on and on about it on the phone one time. And I got really ticked and I was like, Mom, ice dancing's really hetero and I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> and she was like, why are you so mad? And like, usually I give her shit about stuff like this. But I was like really needling her, just like, I don't want to talk about this anymore. And she was like, why are you so mad? Mad Katie and I was like, it's not everybody's straight. And she's like, who's not straight? And I was like, me, I guess. So thank you. I, am, uh, I prefer the term omnisexual. Um, one of my friends told me that in um, Spanish, omni can mean alien. So you know, <laughs> call me. One time I was gonna do a show for like a Pride event and like a, a gold star lesbian acquaintance of mine uh, was like, don't talk about your boyfriend during the show because no one wants to hear about his penis. <laughs> so here's some jokes about him because fuck biphobia. Um, so I'm in love with another raging bisexual. His name is Brandon. And uh, he really giggles when I say raging bisexual because he's like, <laughs> He's like, I'm not angry. But uh, the other day we were playing a rousing rendition of Would You Rather that I started while he was trying to play video games. And I was just like, hey, would you rather me lose 50% of my personality or always smell a little bit like poop? And you guys, he genuinely had to think about it. He made this face that was kind of like, could I deal with poop the rest of my life? And that's love, I think. That is love, I think. He used to work downtown, and one time he brought home this bag of like white powder that he found on the street, and he was like, hey, I think this is drugs. And I was like, what? Why did you bring that into our house? And like, you think I'd be mad because like when somebody brings drugs into your house from the street that they find, you know, in the movies, after the cool black people get killed, it's the cool fat people that are next. And so I was just like, why did you bring that into our house? And he was like, I don't know, I thought it was cool. You think I'd be mad for those reasons, but the reason I was angry was because he gets grossed out when I want to bring furniture home that we find on the street. But he brought home weird crack in a bag into our house. Like when we find a couch on the side of the road, I'll just be like, oh, we should take that to our house. It could be so cute. It could go in this corner. And he's like, oh, it probably has raccoon babies in it. We're not going to take that. And I'm just like, I'm like, we can rebuild it. He's not into it at all. That's where we're like the odd couple. Otherwise, we're the same. But um, so like I said, I've been a genderqueer fairy.
Brave for about five years. Recently, I took the Brave leap into um, starting to use the term non-binary. Um, thank you. I have moved to being uh, they, them. So, you know, they, them pronouns, check-ins, y'all, they, them. Um, it's funny when you make that move, like, I don't know about anybody else, but when I made that move, I started noticing, like, everything, like, gender more than I did before. Like, you know, can my partner call me, like, a ladybug now? Because that's what he likes to call me. He's calling me person bug right now, which is really cute. <laughs> um, I started making all these weird rules for myself. Like, I can't be a ladybug because I'm a them bug or a person bug. But, you know... I just think that it means I can be in anything, bug, uh, ladybug, man bug, whatever. Uh, I contain multitudes, which is why I have so much anxiety. <laughs> um, <laughs> recently I went to um, Artist Repertory Theater, I don't know if y'all know that theater, I love it. Um, went to Artist Repertory Theater, they have an all gender bathroom, they have two sets of all gender bathroom, I was like, yes, I'm going to use that bathroom because I want to, walked in, sat down, here's a sign that says, all feminine products in the trash can, and I was just like, you guys had one job, <laughs> right, like I think somebody even like took their keys and kind of grinded over the word feminine, you know, kind of got me thinking about all the masculine periods I've had in my life. There's even some that were kind of toxically masculine, you know? Where I like give myself shit for crying too much. I usually get over that by eating some more chocolate. But, uh... <laughs> oh, thanks you guys.